So we have some more terrible news about Joe Biden and his team. President-elect Joe Biden's pick to lead the Treasury Department made more than $1 million from speeches and working with corporate clients, according to financial disclosures published on Thursday. Janet Yellen, Biden's nominee to be Secretary of Treasury, made more than $7.2 million speaking at Wall Street firms and corporations over the past two years, according to her financial disclosure form. The president-elect's choice for Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, has made almost $1.2 million in the past two years through consulting clients at the firm Westec Advisors, West Exec Advisors, according to his financial disclosure. The large amounts of money collected by Biden's cabinet picks could complicate progressive support for the nominees during Senate confirmation hearings. Yellen, whom progressives praised when Biden named her as the Treasury nominee, made millions in speaking fees from City, Goldman Sachs, Google, City National Bank, UBS, Citadel LLC, Barclays, uh, Credit Suisse, Credit Suisse, however you say it, Salesforce, and others. For City alone, she received $1 million for nine speeches. And for Citadel, a hedge fund founded by a Republican donor, she received more than $800,000. They continue and they say the following. The potential... Secretary of Treasury also vowed to talk with the department's ethics lawyers to, quote, seek written authorization to participate personally and substantially in any particular matter that involves firms that paid her in the past year. That's insane. Meanwhile, the Secretary of State nominee disclosed that disclosed the clients that he worked with West, at West Exec Advisors included Blackstone, Bank of America, Facebook, Uber, McKinsey and Company the Japanese conglomerate SoftBank, the pharmaceutical company Gilead, the investment bank Lazard, Boeing, defense contractor, AT&T, the Royal Bank, bank of Canada, and LinkedIn. Jesus Christ, man. In addition to the almost $1.2 million made in the past two years, Blinken is expected to earn an estimated $250,000 to $500,000 this year. Okay. I'm floored. I want to read one of these parts one more time to make sure that it's saying what I think it's saying. They said, the potential Secretary of Treasury, Yellen, also vowed to talk with the department's ethics lawyers to seek written authorization to participate personally and substantially in any particular matter that involves firms that paid her in the past year. Okay, so do you understand what they're saying here? And correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm misinterpreting this, but they're saying she came forward to say, yes, even though I've been paid millions and millions and millions of dollars from all these different corporations, so I have a giant conflict of interest, even though that's the case, I'm looking for authorization to involve myself in matters involving these companies. So in other words, forget the corruption, ignore the corruption, I should still have the ability to make decisions that directly involve the people who just paid me millions of dollars. So, yes, when it comes to tax money corporate subsidies, I should be making decisions even though these people just paid me and even though I have a giant conflict of interest and I'll probably make decisions that fall in line with helping the people who pay my bills. She's saying I, that should be overlooked and I should be able to deal with business involving them. Forget the conflict of interest. It's fine. I'm, I'm at a loss for words, man. Like, they don't even try to hide it anymore. You know what I mean? Like back in the day when the first Supreme Court cases came up that effectively ruled money is speech and you could give unlimited amounts of money in politics. When that first happened, you, people still tried to give the appearance of objectivity and the appearance of not being bought. They would try to hide stuff like this. Now it's like they do it and they're not, they don't even think there's anything wrong with it. Like, I don't doubt that she actually thinks that she didn't do anything wrong here. I think she thinks this is totally fine, and this is just business as usual. This is just how it works. What do you mean? Yes, I was the, I think she was the head of the Fed from 2014 to 2018, I believe. And then she went right from there to giving speeches to the most powerful companies in the world, most powerful people in the world, and getting paid a tremendous amount of money for it. And she thinks like, what do you mean? That's just how it works. If you work for the government, you make decisions that benefits the financial institutions and Wall Street and the corporations, and then you get paid by them. And then if I end up back in government, of course I'm going to keep looking out for them. They really think that like, no, if you're against this, you're so naive. 
How could you be so naive? This is obviously... This is obviously standard operating procedure. Where I'm from, this is conventional wisdom that this is how it functions. You would be crazy if you didn't get paid from Goldman Sachs and Google and Boeing and pharmaceutical companies. And then they wonder, by the way, why the American people look at D.C. with such contempt. What was the number? We, we covered a poll recently. I think the number was like, Congress has a 13% approval rating. Now, granted, this, she's not in Congress, right? But I'm just saying people look at the system with complete and utter disdain and disgust. Because they know, like, even if I like some, like my congressman, I'm voting for a lesser of two evils, like, all the time. And I know that ultimately they're putting the needs of billionaires and corporations above the needs of their constituents and the American people. I mean, I'm floored, man. Listen, whoever gives you $7 million or whatever ungodly amount of money she got, like, whoever the corporations are that gave her that, of course she's going to look out for them first and foremost. It's human nature. You know, that's why you guys fund this show through Patreon. And to the extent there are ads on the YouTube channel, I've never spoken to advertisers because there's a wall of separation between YouTube and Google and, and me. So like YouTube and Google talk to advertisers. I don't talk to any advertisers. If they run an ad on my channel, they talk to the YouTube ad team or the Google ad team. It's got nothing to do with me because I know the way the world works. I know that if advertisers talk to me, they would want me to push their product and be totally uncritical. And so if I think something's bad or wrong with a product, I would be put in a position where they don't want me to disclose that. And all I want to do is tell you guys the truth. I don't want to have to think about balancing the needs and the wishes of some ghouls who are trying to pull my puppet strings. I don't want to have any puppet strings. I want to be in a situation where, you know, and again, that's why you guys fund this through Patreon. That's why um, when it comes to Substack, Crystal Kyle and Friends, which we just launched, a lot of you guys are given the $5 per month to see the video version of the podcast because it's human nature that you're going to want to look out for the people who are paying you. So it, for if you're independent, you're looking out for all the small donors, all the regular people who are paying you. If you're not independent, if you're funded millions of dollars from giant corporations and, and big pharma and the military industrial complex, of course they're going to represent those interests. Of course they are. It's not a question. That's so obvious. It, it, unbelievable, man. It is really is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Not even embarrassed, not even ashamed. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, I made a lot of money. Cha-ching, I cashed in. Who cares? I'd also like to make decisions involving these people. I think that's what they're saying. I hope I'm not mischaracterizing that. I think that's what they're saying there. I had to read it two or three times just to digest it because I'm like, that's crazy. You would think you'd have shame and be like, okay, any decisions involving these former corporations that I, that I got paid by? I, I'll recuse myself effectively to use the judicial term. But no. By the way, do you think that um, Tony Blinken as Secretary of State, the fact that he's gotten paid from a lot of the defense contractors, he, they're his clients. Don't you think that him as Secretary of State, now he's less likely to want to um, stop the genocide in Yemen? We're funding and arming Saudi Arabia, and they're committing a genocide in Yemen. And the House and the Senate, I believe, passed the bill to stop funding the genocide in Yemen. But now if you have Biden and you have Blinken, the Secretary of State, and he makes money from the defense contractors, now it's possible he kills that whole thing simply because he's taking money from the defense contractors. So he's going to look out for the defense contractors. Boeing going to look out for them over the, you know, Yemeni babies who are being killed and starved. If you don't see that this is a problem, I don't know what to tell you. I can only explain it for so long in so many ways. But not only is this a problem, it's the biggest problem in Washington, D.C. The biggest problem is this rampant, gross corruption. That's standard operating procedure. And again, they don't even think twice about it now. It's really gross, man. I don't think that these people are bad people. But when you participate in a system that is corrupt from top to bottom, you become corrupt. It takes a very unique, principled person to look at the whole thing and say, no, 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 this is gross. This is all a swamp. And I refuse to go along to get along. Only 1%, if we're lucky, 
of the people in DC react like that. The rest of them are like this. Some of them know on some level what they're doing is wrong. I think most of them don't even think that. They just think this is how it works. Don't be a naive, stupid idealist. Totally unacceptable. 